Yo, what up? Welcome to In The Paint. This is a, an emergency session that we're bringing on, kind of a quick hitter. Uh, usually the quick hitters are something that's a little more fun and exciting to talk about, some sort of a topic that's come up and we want to drop some knowledge real quick. But unfortunately, uh, this one is about something that has sort of, well, not sort of, but completely rocked um, the basketball world as well as sports world and just the world in general. Um, it's about, of course, the passing of Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the seven other uh, innocent people in the helicopter crash this morning. It um, it really doesn't feel real at all, and I'm sure by now everyone has watched and heard a million other people talk about it, but uh, it really hit us hard today. It felt to me like we lost uh, a family member, and it just, uh, you know... It, tragedies like this and death like this it it doesn't it it can't be processed quickly at all um and it doesn't feel real to me i mean it feels like we're we're in a bad dream and it's, and it's not uh it's not real at all jeff and i've been talking about it all day and we've decided to go ahead and jump on here and just kind of express feelings and and open it up to you guys too like any of you if if any of you have anything that you want to talk about please feel free to hit us up um, you can email us at, uh, in the paint podcast at Gmail or hit us up on any of the Instagram or Facebook outlets. Um, cause this is a hard time for everybody. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's a, it's feelings of disbelief. Um, it's unimaginable. You know, you think about the last 24 hours and you think about, um, his name being brought up, you know, obviously over and over again because of uh, LeBron passing um, him and scoring. And it gave you the opportunity to just reflect back on the greatness of his career and like what Kobe Bryant really means to the world of basketball. Um, and then to hear this news this morning, um, being here in L.A. is just absolutely it's, a, it's an absolute tragedy. Then what kick with this was another kick in the gut. Like I was just, you know, hoping that no other, you know, his family members or his daughter, you know, who sadly was with him, wasn't on the helicopter. Just finding ways to like try to wrap my brain around. Hopefully that she was not um, part of this, and um, it was an isolated incident. And unfortunately, you know, you have a number of other families who lost some loved ones. And um, you know, I, I think for the world as a whole. You know, we, we, we say sometimes we put too much importance on sports, um, and maybe maybe there's a little bit of truth to that, but I think overwhelmingly, it's moments like this that happens, and people can understand why these sports legends, icons, heroes, who are just regular people, um, just like us, how why why we get connected to them um, when you're when you're walking with and you're watching greatness um, every day on the tube, and you try to emulate those things that have made somebody great uh i don't know if there's anybody else that has played sports that gave you heart soul intelligence eloquence passion um better than kobe bryant yeah i mean he was really truly one of a kind and if if you don't know you know out there if you don't know much about kobe off the floor i mean the guy was an incredibly intelligent human being. I mean, he was well-read, well-educated, spoke five or six different languages. Um, and, and that goes along with his, I guess, his competitive nature and his desire to be great. Like, he just had a drive that, you know, 99.9% .9 of people don't have. Um, case in point, he gets done with basketball. First of all, he ends his basketball career with a 60-point game, which is something we've never seen before ever in the history of any sport that I can think of. And then he goes off and wins an Academy Award, what, four years later? 
five years later with uh, a documentary, which is basically a love letter to basketball. Um, I mean, who does that? I've never seen anything like that. Uh, it's never been which, done. No. Which, which is what makes something like this so difficult, too. And then, of course, the fact that his daughter was with him and then there was, you know, seven other innocent people is just completely mind-boggling and, and just heartbreaking. What a great, I mean, what a great man, though. What a great father he was to his daughters. Like, his level of commitment to making sure that um, he, be, he became a great husband. But him as a father... Is unbelievable to watch those videos and see those pictures. Yeah. And I, my mind, you know, I, I'll, I'll just honestly, like, I wasn't a massive Kobe fan. I respected the shit out of Kobe Bryant, the basketball player. I was like, this yeah. dude is unreal. And I used to, I, he's the closest thing in my mind to Jordan that we've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. And, but then watching him be this guy and transition from basketball player into, business person into writer producer um and watching him be a dad was one of those things and as a as a black man you always have that you hear this narrative about the absentee father that they push out constantly this guy was so involved yeah. as a father for his children and it was something that you're talking about emulating people yeah you want to talk about you can't shoot a fadeaway jumper but you can be a goddamn good you fucking can be father. a great father and that's exactly what it was and Seemingly, I mean, look, he did so much after basketball to give back. He opened the Mamba Academy, which is like basically just to give his daughters a place to play and to try to spread the love and word of basketball to as many people as possible. Um, I mean, they, they, we saw today he was on uh, another show um, talking about how he hadn't been to a Lakers game since his Jersey retirement because his priorities have been his daughter's basketball. And raising his daughters and being with them and being a family man and being a husband and a and a father, um, and then you know starting his other businesses. It's just, it's a testament to the man and and how incredible of a human being he really was. Um, it's sad that these things, all these things come up after he passes away. I mean that's just sort of how life is. Unfortunately, is like. I feel like everybody stops to smell the roses after the roses are already gone. Right. And that happens way too often. Uh, I think when right. people are around, we tend to focus on the negative way too much right. and not celebrate people for what they are and who they really are. Um, and that's, that's very sad. It's, you know, you, you kind of dropped something earlier about heroes and how there's this uh, sort of like bad, I don't know, bad, but like people just talk about, you know, sports stars shouldn't be your heroes for various reasons. A lot of people have that narrative in their head. And I've never bought into that. Granted, I've been a sports fan my entire life and played sports my whole life. But, um, I mean, what is a hero really, right? A hero is someone who motivates you. A hero is someone who shows you the path to greatness. A hero is someone who uh, wants you to succeed. Someone you can look up to. Someone who teaches you right from wrong. and Shows you what works and what doesn't work. Um, whether that's your dad, your mom, a random person in the world, I don't teacher. A, a teacher. I mean, it could be anyone. And I don't see why people sort of speak down to athletes being heroes for people. Um, just because you don't know someone directly and personally doesn't mean they can't be a hero to you, you know? And I think Kobe was a hero to a lot of people, especially in Los Angeles. But he was definitely a hero to his kids, tell you that much. And he was a hero to a lot of people around him. And I hate when, when anyone really tries to say that athletes can't be heroes. Because I tell you what, my heroes are two people. My heroes are my dad. But then my other hero is Michael Jordan. I mean, he taught me to love basketball just from watching him. Um, and that's, that helped forge who I am today. You know, it helped give me a path to use the game of basketball for more than just a game, but to actually do something with my life and be successful and have opportunities. I mean, a lot of that came from basketball. I uh, just happened to look down at my feet right now. I'm rocking my Kobe's tonight. Uh, I haven't worn them in a long time, <laughs> but I put them on just out of a want to walk with greatness, um, which is why I threw them on tonight um, in honor of the man. Um, I really, you know, I had an opportunity to meet him um, at an Athletes for Impact event. My uh, good friend, Lindsay Kagawa Colas, one of the most talented and intelligent women's uh, sports agents in the business, um, who's very much an advocate about um, equality. Um, and 
she had invited Kobe and a few other people to this uh, luncheon at the JW Marriott down uh, down across from Staples Center um, a couple years ago. And the pointed questions that Kobe would ask and be involved in and, and, and his perspective on things, it just, it amazed me. Um, my level of respect uh, for the man, I think, continued to grow from that point on. And I started digging in deeper to, you know, some of his past post, uh, post-game uh, interviews where I've never seen a human being that's a sports person per se to be able to flip between languages so mm. eloquently and to be thoughtful in his responses to those reporters who are asking him in Italian, in Spanish, do yourself a favor, like watch some of the great things that Kobe said post game and watch the level of talent that he has and intelligence as a man um, to be able to flip um, into another language is absolutely unbelievable. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, the, I know about a year ago when he did that uh, big conference in uh, Vegas, uh, everybody was forwarding me the links, you know, if you got to watch this Kobe uh, Q&A, which is yeah, absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, and, and you just got to see how this man's mind works. And the sad thing is we're not going to – we only can now go back and look at the past things that he's done and, uh, and I'd say revel in research and spend some time doing that. Um, but that's a brilliant mind that we're not going to be able to get his perspective on things and see what – the, what the quote-unquote finished product would have uh, looked like over the next f- four or five decades. I mean, he, he, was, he was a savant. To call him anything else is, is sort of shortening or shorting him on what he really was. He was a man on the basketball court at the age of 17 and able to compete with the best basketball players in the world at the age of 17. And whether he chose basketball or chemistry, I, there's no doubt in my mind no matter what he would have chosen, what his path would have been, he's one of those people that had a drive and had an intelligence and had a desire to be successful that it doesn't matter what he was going to do. He was going to be great at it. And that's something that separates him from a lot of people. Um, It is sad that we have to talk about it now in the past tense because there were people that I think saw it when he was alive and saw it when he was playing and understood it, people that were around him a lot. Certainly people in the basketball community knew it. I mean, I was similar to you. I was never a huge Kobe fan, but I always respected the hell out of his game and, and 100% you know, watched him play every chance I could because I, I knew what I was seeing. Every, you knew you were watching yeah. something that you might not see again. And if you were going to yeah. see it again, it was because Kobe was going to be the one to outdo himself. One, yeah, exactly. He was going to be the one to play better the next time you saw him. Um, I, I big, 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 you know, big hugs to, obviously, the Bryant family, husband, father, son, brother, um, big, you know, hugs to my friends who obviously being here in L.A. and knowing a number of different people in the media and especially with um, my uh, NBA, you know, friends and people who had the opportunity to work with him. They say he was nothing but the consummate uh, professional um, and a big hugs to them because they're 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 this is hitting everyone. Yeah. There's a lot of people really, hurting. really deeply. There's a lot of people hurting right now. Um, if you get a chance. If you want to read a good piece, Derek Jeter has a great piece uh, that he just put up on Players Tribune. I know he and he and uh, Kobe were close. Yeah, um, that's a great piece. So take a moment to look at that. Um, and man, I'm just bummed. Like I'm just bummed. I'm just sad. I'm bummed. I know a lot of yeah. people are. I'm just sad and bummed. This is this is a level of of tragedy that I is hard to equate with anything else. I mean, we were talking earlier about you know like. Roberto Clemente right. dying in a plane crash. It, it, it's that level, but I didn't know. I, I wasn't around for Roberto Clemente. I only exactly. knew him from stories and from things you've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, this is like John Lennon being shot, but different, I guess, because John Lennon, it was like, you know, it could have been stopped somehow, you think, in real life. Like, I don't know. Somebody could have stopped it. But the level, the height of this, it feels like something like that. I mean, it feels like an icon is gone far too he's 41 41 and on top of that his daughter and then other people that were involved it's just i don't think we'll ever see anything else close to what this feels like i hope we never do and i really hope we don't yeah um man it's um hmm. i was gonna say something i don't even I, my other, i guess my other my other piece to that was you know community so you think about community we all are in a sense mourning uh, the life, the lives that were lost. Um, but what's going to ultimately pull everyone through is community. It, it really, 
tragic tragedy like this happens and then you see this outpouring of love which reinforces the fact that humans are at their greatest sometimes when bad things do happen yep um because the level of community um and being able to embrace one another whether it's via phone call via text just letting you know that you're thinking about um your friends at these moments yeah. Um, it's huge, um, and it's very important. And, and I, yes, the, we we forget about it because tomorrow, you know, the sun's gonna come up tomorrow. It's another um, day for everyone, you know, but for people close to him, it's gonna be a very, very. It's tough gonna be day. a very tough go ahead. Like yeah. you, you can't even see what's gonna happen on the other side of it right now. They're in it. Those people are in it right now. Their family members are dealing right now, and um, yeah. we're dealing from a, a little bit further away, obviously. But what I will say is, it just goes back to remind you: you must. Tell the people that you love, that you love them. You must always give that hug, give that look before you leave the house, that yep. that tap on the butt to your loved one. Yep. Um, and you have to do it consistently because you just this, this you nothing just is know. promised. It's not promised. Yeah. It's not promised. You so. never know. I agree. I it's something that I always try to do myself, and for reasons like this, you just never know when the last might the last time you see someone might be the last time. You just yeah. never know. I tell um, friends all the time now, like I like I used to have a weird thing about not saying I love you to people, but I tell my friends all the time now, like I'm like, look, I'm gonna tell you if I love yeah. you, I love you, like it's just so you, so it's never a question if something sad would happen, unfortunate happen to me, you're like gonna you know, know, hey, Jeff loved me, yeah. and that's one of the most important things that, uh, out of my growth as I try to evolve to become a better human and a better man, yeah, is to be communicative on those things and say, you know what, I love you, and yeah. let it be. And I, I have a similar kind of scenario i mean it, it in the last few years i went through something that, that you know about a right. close friend of mine passed away from cancer way way too early and i know that that is another beast all in itself that it, it seems to have affected just about every person on the planet at this point but um you you as well right Jeff. i lost my sister-in-law dana yeah. Um, who was like my big sister? I lost yeah. her to cancer as well, and those are those. And I and I'll tell you, part of that loss was what changed me M yeah. to make sure I became a better communicator, let people know, and just to be honest and like say, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I, I care about you. Yeah, and like because because life is it's fucking unfair. It's fleeting. It's unfair. It's completely unfair. And that's exactly what I was kind of getting at with with what I why I started to talk about that is because my uh, experience with my friend. I mean, it was a long drawn out situation but it was so quick so fast at the end but what it taught me during that is that you have to express how you feel about people to people you really have to let them know because otherwise the second they're gone you have no more opportunities to do that or yeah, and you just don't know what's going to happen and it but it forced me to speak and think in different ways that i hadn't before and maybe that's maturity but you know whatever it is that gets you there um you know, now I, I don't take any second that I have with anyone for granted. I really, truly try not to. And I definitely try to tell people how I feel about them and let them know that I care and that I love them. I mean, you really do have to smell the roses while the roses are still there because when they're gone, there's nothing you can do. And it's really, really hard to deal with. Um, that kind of grief is, is very difficult to go through. And I, I I can't imagine going through it now with the way that Kobe's family must be going through it. No, I mean, you know, you've seen it up close with the loss of your friend, um, loss of your grandmother as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the post yeah. of the loss of my sister-in-law and, and having an understanding of, like, what the family dynamic becomes when you lose a spouse. It's heartbreaking, man. Um, and it's, very, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a tough road ahead. But, again, I've watched people show their level of compassion and extend um their love to my family when they were going through things and specifically you know not going too deep to my brother and my brother's children mm -hmm. um and it's the same love and compassion that i will i will watch and love to see people give to vanessa um bryant and her family um, yeah. and the kids that are that are that are that are gonna have to deal with this in the immediate family and then the parents like a parent when you lose your son or you lose your 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 child like that is just the hardest pain yeah. that a parent can ever go through so you know it's it's wrapping the entire Bryant family and the other families that were lost on the uh, uh today I'm wrapping them around with a big hug of just love and support Let's let the, the king 
rest, man. He was a great man. Let's let him rest. Let's re reflect on what he instilled in a lot of us to um, see what it means to put in the work ethic, to be passionate in your craft and be one of the greatest to ever do it in your craft. And those intangibles and tangible things that he represented, he modeled his life by, um, we can take a lot of good from that and that can help all of us in our daily lives um, with that. I have nothing but love and compassion and empathy for what the family's going through right now. Um, that being his immediate family, that being his NBA family, that being the world at large who looked up to this man um, and hug your loved ones, man. Yeah, definitely. That's a good way to end it right there. Uh, tell the people you love that you love them. All right, that's a good place to swing it. Uh, cheers to you, Kobe. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. In honor of the great Kobe Bean Bryant, we're going to let this thing go and end it at 24 minutes. So we'll let the theme music rock out all the way, cut it right at 24. In honor of the man, the father, the husband, the son, the brother, Kobe Bean Bryant. Yeah. <laughs>